Come with us as we recap Tyler Perry out of drag trying to woo a homeless woman. Beneath the steamy mist, Wesley Deeds, a wealthy gentleman and successful entrepreneur, living seemingly the perfect life, ponders on his true purpose. As the due date with his ravishing fiancée Natalie draws ever close, he wonders if the life he lives is truly of his own accord. Basically, Tyler Perry having a midlife crisis. While getting ready for work, Natalie predicts every one of her fiancé's complaints, indicating a staleness in their once fiery relationship. I don't know what would be stale with such a beauty that is Gabriel Union. Later, Wesley witnesses a heated exchange between his brother, Walter, and a female companion. He quickly breaks up the fight and drives his brother home, along the way urging him to get his act in order because the man ain't even got his driver's license due to his DUI. Across the city, Lindsay Wakefield, a struggling single mother, faces eviction after once again failing to make her rent. Following the confrontation, she unearths a hidden envelope full of cash, the last remaining lifeline for herself and her daughter, Ariel. Unfortunately, Lindsay's horrible morning continues, escalating into a heated altercation between the Deeds brothers when she parks in their spot. An enraged Walter threatens to have the vehicle towed with Ariel inside, but luckily, Wesley talks some sense into his loser-ass brother. While the brothers squabble amongst one another, Lindsay collects her check but finds it severely lacking due to the IRS collecting her back taxes. Heartbroken, she departs to face the cruel reality that awaits her. Things only go from bad to worse as she finds her vehicle moments away from being towed. She calls Walter a midget and to shush. Her pleas fall on deaf ears. Despite sensing her desperation, she still has her car taken away. No car, late for school, and late for work. Approached by the principal, who subtly warns her about neglecting her responsibilities as a mother, an accusation that couldn't be further from the truth. Elsewhere, Wilhelmina, matriarch of the Deeds family and Heidi, Natalie's best friend, meet with the bride-to-be in a posh bridal store. They urge Natalie to think about her future with Wesley, specifically the possibility of having children and what that might mean for her life and say she ain't getting any younger. Miss Ma'am, Gabriel Union has barely aged. After dropping Ariel at school, a horrified Lindsay finds her scattered belongings being picked by fugly vultures. She frantically searches through the mattress, but the stash of money she had is missing. Her soul crushed, Lindsay loads up what little she can, cursing the heartless monsters who showed her not an ounce of compassion. The Deeds boys meet with their mother to discuss the engagement party. Unfortunately, things soon get heated as mother calls Walter's wife trailer park trash. Walter claps back, says his dad met her at a trailer park. Walter's fury only grows when his mother touches on their struggling company, a situation she blames on Walter's misguided decisions and failures. As they go at it, a now homeless Lindsay is forced to have her poor daughter spend the night in a utility closet, where Tyler Perry hid most of his life. Meanwhile, Wesley, exhausted yet determined, continues to work himself to the bone to save the company. Unfortunately, Walter can't be bothered as he leaves early after submitting a shoddy-ass report. While Wesley works, Natalie and Heidi attend a fashion show, during which the Heidi once again brings up the topic of kids, her indifference almost ruining her friend's night. As they wait for the show to start, Natalie confides with her friend that she and Wesley don't really check on one another, a disconnect that Heidi finds quite peculiar. Back at the tower, Wesley discovers a crucial solution to their problem. After informing his trusted partner, John, of the good news, he catches Lindsay, who works as a night janitor in their building, making a personal phone call on the company phone. When threatened with termination, she says, you gonna run and tell Massa, unaware of Wesley's position as CEO. Wesley tries to relate his life to Lindsay's by talking about his trip to the Maldives when he was young, only making it clear Wesley grew up like Elon Musk. The pair bump into each other again when Wesley notices mother and daughter sitting in their vehicle in the dead of night. Though Lindsay attempts to deter his concern, the kind-hearted businessman still decides to keep them company. He quickly befriends Ariel while simultaneously introducing himself as the CEO of the company. Mortified by her earlier aggression, Lindsay sincerely apologizes, her voice tinged with regret as she seeks to make amends. Beneath the dimly lit street lamp, Wesley learns about their misfortunes, underscored by Ariel's grumbling stomach. Ever the gentleman, he decides to treat them to a nearby pizza joint, much to the young girl's delight. Meanwhile, Natalie's friends question her commitment to Wesley, wondering why she had never introduced him to them, wondering if he ugly or broke or carless or a baby daddy or in prison. 
She brushes off their complaints, instead urging the Debbie Downers to party the night away like the Clovers and bring it on. At the pizza parlor, Lindsay and Wesley bond over their shared love for motorcycles, while Ariel loses herself in some arcade games. They laugh over the day's events, from Lindsay insulting him to his face to their odd encounter on the road. While she finishes her meal, Wesley recounts the events that led to their company's rise, the complexity of which leaves Lindsay confused yet entertained. He asks Lindsay about her dreams, leading her to reveal that she had to drop out of nursing school after Ariel's father passed away in Iraq. The sensitive nature of the topic seems to strike a nerve, and Lindsay once again lies about having a boyfriend coming to pick them up. Before they head back to their vehicles, she takes a portion of the tip Wesley had left, the amount just enough for them to gas up their empty tank. Later that night, Wesley arrives to find Natalie, drunk beyond reason, being half carried and half dragged into their apartment by her friends. Once their friends bid them adieu, Natalie attempts to ride him like a pony, but Wesley says he wants to close the blinds because of the creeper across the way. Natalie snaps, saying Wesley is never spontaneous. The next day, the leaders of the Deeds Corporation attempt to turn things around by purchasing a rival company. Unfortunately, their offer is vehemently denied, causing Walter to lash out in anger, resulting in the immediate collapse of the meeting. As John rushes to make amends, Wesley scolds his brother, warning that such actions will lead to the downfall of everything their father worked his entire life to build. Meanwhile, Lindsay, after securing a spot in a homeless shelter, rushes to pick up her daughter from school. Unfortunately, as she waits, Ariel accidentally informs one of her teachers of their horrible situation. The teacher then proceeds to confront Lindsay, threatening to call child services if the mother refuses to cooperate. Consumed over the thought of losing her daughter, Lindsay lashes out in frustration, leaving the poor girl in tears. Later that evening, Wesley accidentally stumbles upon Ariel sound asleep in the utility closet. Saddened by her plight, he decides to have rest in his office while he searches for her mother. Upon finding Lindsay, he reprimands her for such irresponsible behavior, stating that no child should have to endure that. However, the troubled mother is quick to defend her actions, revealing that they have no one else to turn to for help. She erupts into a frenzy and proclaims that Wesley has no right to judge her because his privileged ass is out of touch with the real world. Following the argument, Lindsay departs with her daughter, the pair seeking shelter in the home that was promised. Thankfully, after several restless nights, they finally find a warm bed to rest. Unfortunately, Wesley finds no similar rest as Natalie questions him after finding a strand of blonde hair on their bed. However, to his surprise, she quickly drops the accusations, believing it impossible for a man who is as predictable as a Tyler Perry movie to exhibit any form of unfaithfulness. While he struggles for sleep, Lindsay's slumber is rudely interrupted by a fugly whitey. Terrified, she grabs her belongings and rushes out of the shelter, prioritizing her daughter's safety over anything else. Without anywhere else to go, they are once again forced to spend the night in their vehicle. The next day, John delivers some horrible news. Due to Walter's outburst, the rival company has backed out of their deal, leaving John to wonder if the former is trying to steal the company right from under his big brother's nose. Before he can finish, Walter suddenly interrupts, angrily berating Wesley for failing to pick him up for work. Amidst their squabble, Wesley's secretary, April, delivers a handwritten thank you note from Lindsay. After reading the note, Walter, the shit starter, wonders if his brother and the night janitor have something going on between them. Wesley vehemently denies the accusations and orders his nosy brother to head back to work. Late in the night, Lindsay stumbles upon a stressed out Wesley, taking the opportunity to thank him for his generosity and ease his nerves with a massage. As her tender fingers work on his aching joints, Wesley feels a gradual lightness, as though a heavy weight was slowly lifting off his big back shoulders. The following day, Wesley witnesses Ariel being dragged away by Child Protective Services. As the young girl screams for her mother, a helpless Lindsay rushes to the staff quarters to break down. Wesley quickly follows and offers to lend a helping hand, but his attempts are shut down brought about by her fear of people constantly letting her down. However, hearing the sincerity in his voice, Lindsay ultimately relents, accepting his compassion with open arms. Wesley's first order of business is to place a roof over the poor woman's head, handing her the keys to one of the company's lavish corporate apartments. Though Lindsay is initially hesitant to accept such a grand gesture, her paternal instincts compel her to accept, knowing that this is the only way to reunite her with Ariel. 
Later that evening, Wesley makes love to his fiancée like never before, fulfilling her wildest fantasies as the rain pours around them. Days later, mother and daughter are finally reunited. Lindsay takes the opportunity to apologize to her child, saying she'd been crazy trying to survive. Meanwhile, Natalie notices her fiancé breaking out of his routine, depicting the flash of spontaneity she had long yearned for. However, the subtle changes soon begin to bother Natalie, leading her to wonder if there is another woman in her fiancé's life. Girl, yo man done picked up a homeless woman. At the office, Walter spots Lindsay walking to his brother's office to invite him out for lunch. Despite Walter's displeasure, he accepts, and the two depart atop a massive beast of a bike she had borrowed from a local club. Ho, is you okay? You a single mother riding a motorcycle. Get that bag first. The pair cruise without a worry in the world, the wind blowing through their hair as they cruise through San Francisco. Well, no wonder our girl couldn't afford rent. After what seems like hours beneath the California sunshine, they are greeted by a stunning lakeside view. Unfortunately, the mood is quickly ruined when Lindsay suddenly kisses Wesley, forcing him to reveal the truth about his engagement with Natalie. Back at the office, John, unlike their past meeting, arrives to deliver some good news. He comments about Wesley being wet. Girl, he was wanting to do the nasty. After careful consideration, their rivals had decided to accept the offer, saving the Deeds Corporation from going under. The next week, Wesley celebrates their victory, popping a bottle of the finest champagne with their entire entourage. Lindsay accidentally walks into the party and despite her trepidation, is basically forced to attend by Walter. Natalie looking a little intimidated, Walter calls Lindsay the help and Wilhelmina is shocked by this. Sensing the chemistry between the two, Wilhelmina informs the lowly janitor of her son's fascination that Wesley likes to work on projects then throws them away. Her comments result in a confrontation between the two brothers, leading Walter to reveal that he was the one who manufactured the deal that saved their company. Unfortunately, his mother slaps him so hard right into this Tyler Perry movie. Inebriated, enraged, and humiliated, Walter attempts to leave the party in his brother's vehicle. Wesley attempts to stop his younger sibling, resulting in an all-out elevator brawl. Within the metal box, the family notices the subtle yet affectionate interactions between Lindsay and her boss. Following the day's events, Wesley, consumed by his feelings for Lindsay, heads over to her apartment and attempts to return her earlier kiss, only to have her reject him. Instead, she urges Wesley to search for what truly makes him happy and not waste his time on another project he will just leave behind. She dismisses their feelings saying she don't think she even attracted to him and says this was a mere temporary lapse brought on by the troubles and stress going on in their lives. Wesley's heartache only deepens when Natalie, who has finally put the pieces together, decides that they should call off their engagement. Despite their undying love for one another, Wesley echoes her sentiments, accepting that their relationship has been building upon the pressures of society. Natalie has no interest in having kids, the next morning, the pair arrive at Wilhelmina's posh manor to announce the sad news. Unfortunately, before they can do so, she introduces the couple before all her guests, forcing them to make the announcement before all their friends and family. Amidst the stunned gasps and wide eyes, Wesley reveals his intentions to travel the world and pursue his dreams. He names John as the interim CEO, a decision that infuriates Walter, who believes himself to be on the short end of the stick once again. Well. Lindsay did call you midget. Wesley reminds his brother that the world had always treated him fairly and that it was by his own doing that everything fell apart. With that, Wesley departs, leaving a sea of dumbfounded onlookers in his wake. That evening, he approaches Lindsay, who apologizes for how she treated him the other night. Following the apology, Wesley reveals the sad truth about his wedding and his plans to move to Africa to catch up with some of his oldest friends. Lindsay is overjoyed, her heart swelling with pride, for this is the first time in his life that the young businessman is truly charting his own path, living unapologetically on his own terms. Before he leaves, he drops a bombshell, asking Lindsay to accompany him on his journey. Unfortunately, she tearfully rejects his offer, knowing that she belongs in San Francisco with her daughter. As the days pass, John settles into his role as interim CEO, while Walter, moved by his brother's words, finally turns a new leaf. Just as he is about to depart, Wilhelmina arrives to make amends and bid her son a tearful farewell. Upon boarding the plane, Wesley is greeted by a familiar and soothing voice that instantly melts his heart. Turning around, he finds both Lindsay and Ariel seated in the aisle across him. 
In that moment, Lindsay expresses her love and trust in Wesley with a tender, passionate kiss. A kiss that marks the beginning of their shared journey towards self-discovery. Or simply put, Lindsay celebrating her ass so she don't have to be broke no more. What did y'all think of this movie? Quite a predictable Tyler Perry project, but you really feel for Lindsay's life struggles. I liked how Natalie was very understanding of their failed engagement. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.